This is Eli from Typewriter Minutes, a TV show emergency aired on NBC from 1972 to 1977. The series stars Randolph Mantooth as John Gage and Kevin Ty as Roy DeSoto, two rescuers who work jointly as paramedics and firefighters in the Los Angeles metropolitan area. The duo forms Squad 51, a medical and rescue crew of the Los Angeles County Fire Department. They work in concert with the fictional Rampart General Hospital medical staff, portrayed by Robert Fuller, Julie London, and Bobby Troop, and with the Firefighter Engine Company at Station 51. Real firefighters played regular roles in the series. The emergency TV series is credited with popularizing the concepts of EMS and paramedics in American society, and even inspiring other states and municipalities to expand the service. Our favorite part of the show is when Station 51's two smoking hot red machines come out for action. Now let's see. Where else have we recently seen two smoking hot red machines ready for action? Today we're looking at two smoking hot red machines that are ready for action. A 1959 Smith Corona Galaxy in Hunter Red and one from 1960 and they're exactly the same. Pick both of these up within the last six months. This one was a shop goodwill machine, other than some adhesive on the front that I haven't had a chance to take off yet. The body is uh, just about flawless. The inside is filthy dirty. So this one has not been cleaned and tuned and adjusted, but this one has. And so for purposes of today's review, we're gonna look at this one. This one, the body also is in really good shape. It's got a few minor things. A little teeny tiny piece of the white plastic is missing right there. Up on the ribbon cover, it's got some wear marks there and there. I'm not going to touch them up with, with, uh, with paint because I kind of like the... gives it a little bit of patina like it's been used. And it has been used few little more wear marks here, a few scuffs on the back, down here and here where it's been in the case, and then up on the ribbon cover, it's got a scar right there. I've decided not to try and touch that up with paint because it's, I think, too long of a streak. I've tried that before on other machines and it's just too much, but uh, overall, it looks Still looks like a nice smoking hot red machine that is ready for action. And we'll show you some of the features. Okay, Eli, take it away. So it has a dedicated one and exclamation mark key, a QWERTY keyboard, a backspace button, a touch control, the ribbon color selector, tab set, tab clear, tab, margin release. And then how do you get under the hood? It slides open like this. That's kind of cool, as opposed to the 50s machines that come up this way. It's got the sliding ribbon cover. I'm going to pass off the camera to Eli. And then over on this side, you got the, this is the manual ribbon reverse. You just click that forward or back, and you can manually change the way the ribbons or the spools are pulling has automatic ribbon reverse, so you have to have, well, on this particular model, you have to have eyelets on the ribbon, and they come out, and if you'll zoom in here a little bit, they come out and trigger these little forks here, so you have to have eyelets. It's got the little ruler on the front, matches the ruler on the, um, boy, it's been a rough morning, on the paper bale, and a matching ruler back on the, uh, paper scale on the back. It's got a little lift up eraser table. Please keep your erasers away from this machine if you please. Okay, we'll close the hood. Over on this side, you have the carriage centering lever. It doesn't really lock it in place, but if you pull it up, you'll see the carriage stops right there and that's how you center it when you put it in the case and then when you're ready to use it, it just comes out like that 
Um, scooch this over here a little bit. Uh, we come over to the side. We have the paper release lever. So if your paper is crooked, just flip that up. Scoot your paper around. Put it back in. It's got push and slide margin settings here and here. And what are those? Rub it your paper supports. Yep. So your paper doesn't flop over towards the back of the machine. Uh, it has a quick release platen. I'll show you that in just a sec. First, we'll come over this side. This is where it hooks into the case. So there's always a little bit of scuffing going on around there. Overall, the back still looks really good. Up on this side, if you'll zoom in, this is where we have the uh, line spacing. Triple space, double space, single space. You have the variable line space button. So when you pull that out, releases the clicks and you can put it wherever you want on forms and whatnot and you'll lose your line spacing when you use that if you want to retain your line spacing use this little guy right here that also releases the clicks but it remembers your line spacing where you were okay we'll take a quick break because I want to show you how I repaired this platen knob which was broken when I got it so the platen knob was busted off and just hanging there when I got it. I had to take it all apart. The first thing I did was clean it up, super glued the shaft to the knob. After that dried, I heated up some little lock washers, melted them into the plastic across the crack to kind of hold it together, and then covered it with a layer of epoxy, and it's uh, just about as good as new. My executive assistant is going to show you the page gauge and the quick release platen. So the page gauge, if you'll zoom up here, you'll see there's two sets of numbers. There's the green set on the right and the red numbers on the left. And if you're using 8.5 by 11 paper, which most people are, you'll line up this 11 where it says set. And then once you, and you can use the variable line spur. You can use this to get it right where you want, or the variable line space actually. But you get that 11 lined up, and then put your paper in. You type up your page, and then as you're getting close to the end of the paper, Keep an eye on the red numbers on the left. Two inches left, one inch left, and then paper's out. So that's how you do the page gauge to keep track of where you are towards the end. And then the quick release platen, it's kind of a nice feature. You lift up this um, plastic cover, and use two hands, pops up. You want to move the carriage all the way to the right, release the line splay, or uh, pull out the variable line space button, and then there's a little, little lever right here. You pull that up, I'm kind of doing this at an awkward angle, but you pull up on that lever, and then the platen, just pull it up, comes right out. And then put it back in the same way. Make sure the carriage is all the way to the right. Push, slide it in, and you have to kind of twist it a little bit. In it goes. Close that, close that. And then push the variable line space button back in. And you're good to go. So that's kind of helpful if you get dirt and crud underneath there. That makes it easier to clean it out. Also makes it easier to take the platen out if you need to clean the platen. Now we're gonna look at the case. So this has the, what I call the second generation holiday case. The original holiday case looked like that. It came in a few different colors. This is the one I think is the most common. And they call it the holiday case because that one and this one has this removable insert on the inside. This bracket comes out, and I guess they advertised it so that you could take that out and use this as a suitcase if you wanted 
clothes that smelled like a typewriter, but you could take it on a holiday. Um, but I really like the looks of this one. It's got this, I don't know, kind of cross patch look. I don't know what you call it, but it's solid. Uh, made out of aluminum, I believe, and I think it was made by Samsonite. It has the similar latching mechanism to the next generation trimline case, which was a little bit shorter and trimmer than this one. But I really like the looks of this. I like the looks of the, like this cross patching, whatever it's called. It's got this wide band in the middle. So I'm kind of a, a nut when it comes to, or a fanatic when it comes to typewriter cases. I like the, the different types of cases. And this one has a, this big plate on the bottom for setting it down on the ground as opposed to the original holiday case which had these metal feet and then the later trim line case which also had the metal feet so in the interim they went to this system which works just fine and this little bracket back here is what goes into the back of the machine. So we'll go ahead and put the typewriter in. See that hole there? Goes into that bracket in the back very carefully so you don't scratch the paint. And then it, as you push down, it'll jiggle it a little bit. locks into place and so when you want to release it there's a little lever in there push it in the direction of the arrow here now it's locked now it's released and it comes right out so that's the second generation holiday case one of my favorite cases overall, just like the looks of it. Before the type test, my assistant wanted to mention a few more things. So we'll take a quick peek at the bottom of the machine. Unlike the Smith Cronas from the 50s, which were open on the bottom, the Galaxy style has this plate, which helps protect the bottom, but it also collected years and decades of eraser shavings and dust. And so that's one of the reasons we give it a full flush and cleaning. Uh, they changed the feet on these. The prior version from the 50s had four block rubber feet. Then they went to this, I don't know, staple book where it's got eight feet. Four on this side, four on this side. They changed these feet on the next generation Galaxy 2. But these are actually still in good shape still nice and soft and they're not uh, cracking and peeling which you see sometimes and then here's two little slots that also fit down into the holiday case that's why there's a little bit of scuffing there and there so okay we'll tip it up and then finally before we do the type test for the movie connoisseurs out there this typewriter made a guest appearance in the movie breakfast at tiffany's which we'll show you in the 1961 movie, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Holly Golightly, played by Audrey Hepburn, is in Paul's apartment and sees a typewriter that she calls beautiful, but notices it has no ribbon in it. And now my assistant will do the type test. Okay, it's got the little, I forgot to show this, little paper guide right here. I always keep that on zero. Put the bunny ears up. Platen on this is in good shape. It's not totally rock hard. It's not totally soft either. So I recommend two pieces of paper, your original and a backing sheet. A little crooked, so we'll straighten that out. We'll do a couple lines on black, then a couple lines on red. The 
I highly recommend that you have something like this, this rub, rubber pad, anti-skid pad, because these things are built like a tank and they kind of want to move if you don't have uh, something grippy under there. Even though the feet are good, it, every time you hit the space bar or a key, it just wants to move a little bit. So I recommend one of those. Okay, first on the black setting. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Oops, got the typos already. There's the line lock, so if you want to keep going into the margin, just hit margin release. All right, pardon the typos. We'll do a couple lines on red now. The quick red box jumps over the lazy brown box. Oops. More typos. really like the feel of the 60 Smith Coronas. You don't really get the skipping that you get with Royal Quiet Deluxes of the same vintage, even if you have sloppy typing style. Uh, I don't know I, I don't, if the escapement was just better designed or what, but I really like the typing action and the precision of the 50s and 60s Smith Coronas. So I'm gonna grab that camera and show you the typeface. Again, pardon the typos. Everything's been cleaned, the slugs were cleaned. And as you can see, everything looks really good. I did adjust the uh, shift or the uh, on feet. I'll pass the camera back off so I'll show you the, uh, the alignment, which I did adjust. And then shift log H. Caps lock H. Oops. Okay. Everything's nice and aligned. There's an adjustment underneath for the regular uh, caps and small letters so that they come into alignment. And then the caps lock also needed adjustment because the caps lock H's were up high and there's an adjustment down in there where you have to bend a piece of metal to make that adjustment and I did that. Now everything is nice and even Steven. So Smith Cronas of this vintage, one of my favorite typing machines. The buttercup keys are kind of cool looking. The prior version from the 1950s had thinner keys. I don't know why they went to the buttercup. Maybe so you don't see as much of the open space when you're down here. I don't know. But just a really solid machine, solid typer. And, oh, I forgot to show the tabulator. I have it set to go. No, I did have it set every 10 spaces. I'll pass the camera back off. But the key set tabulator, you can clear and set them one at a time. Clear, 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 clear. Now it should be all clear. And I put my hand out here because you don't want the carriage to come crashing to the left. So the tabs are all clear. And then I'll set them every 10 spaces. Set. 
Set. Set. Now, tabs over every 10 spaces. And there's a neat little window down in there, which I kind of overlook sometimes to show on these videos, but that shows you where you're typing. That matches up with the, the ruler up here, but it's just a neat little window. That's it for the typing test. We'll finish this review of this 1960 Smith Corona Galaxy with some pros and cons. Here are the pros. The red hot hunter red color. The Smith Corona reliability. For uh, people like me who are not professionals but hobbyists, one of the things that I appreciate about Smith Coronas is the open bottom. Well, it's not open now, but when you take this plate off, it's fairly easy to get to the inside to clean and make adjustments. Some some brands of typewriters don't make it that easy, so that's definitely a pro for somebody like me. By the way, when you tip it on the back, be careful with the rabbit ears. You don't want to smash them. It has nice cosmetic condition with a few scuffs. Some excellent typing feel and no skipping. A key set tab tabulator. It's in excellent mechanical condition. It's super nice and clean. It has the quick release platen, a super cool holiday case, and the breakfast at Tiffany's Fame. And cons, it has a few scuffs, like I mentioned. They're on the ribbon cover. A few minor ones here and there, some wear marks. But overall, just in fabulous shape and I can't really think of any other cons this this series of Smith Corona is one of my favorite machines favorite among my favorites so just a really nice machine that's the end of typewriter minutes be sure to share link like and subscribe bye Squad 51 available. Squad 51.